So, let's see the same thing for the player, for the enemies, not the player, we've seen the player. Okay, so let's add a script and we're going to name this enemy. Uh, you know what, we could just add this as enemy AI or enemy locomotion, I guess. Yeah, okay, let's call this locomotion, but it's going to handle AI as well. Open that up. Don't care for this. So, now this is going to be a state, which means we need to implement the abstract class for the tick. So, well, we do know we're going to need a nav mesh agent which means let's add the AI here. So we can add now a message agent. Then we do know that we're going to need an animator for anim. And the other thing I would like to have, well, for now, we're going to do the simplest form of uh, anim detection. Okay, and that is a check by distance. So transform is just going to say player transform. Not going to worry about, you know, adding colliders or anything like that. We're just going to keep things basic for now. Let's add the header. And let's add some states. Uh, okay, states. Let's see. Let's do, I'm making them public just so that we can see them from the inspector. They don't need to be public. Keep that in mind. Public bull has enemy. Public bull is moving. I think for that, or yeah, let's maybe say has player. For that, for now, this will do. So let's do a player detection script or whatever. Let's add some stats to this. Okay, for example, player distance or the deck distance. And let's just say four, four units. Uh, we're definitely going to need a movement speed. Let's say two, uh, rotation speed as well. Let's say four, uh, maybe that's too much. Let's say 15 and uh, we'll see. So if you do not have player, just run your player detection. Later we'll add things like patrol or, you know, moving around or maybe they do something else, anything. Okay, so player detection. Otherwise, move to player. For player detection, or let's add this here. For player detection, all we need is the distance between you. And uh, let's do on start. Let's also add the shortcut for the transform. We can also do the same thing on to the player locomotion since we've added start in the end. Okay, this can go from here, here. And I think we can close this. Okay, so distance from M transform position, player transform dot position. If distance is lower than the, uh, the deck distance, then you can say, is moving equals to or has player equals to. I guess is moving is not really, we might not need it in this part. We might need it later. So we would like to move. The first thing we would like to do is agent dot set destination to the player transfer dot position. Okay, simple enough. Let's say on start agent dot speed will be your movement speed. 
an agent dot angular speed will be your rotation speed although we might have to override this then let's play on the animation or actually let's set a bool to the animation for is moving and set this to true let's go and set up the animation for the enemies then or one enemy I'm going to close one of the enemies let's close the one uh, closer to us we don't want this anymore let's add the state manager which is going to be handling the state and uh, let's say add the enemy locomotion add it on the default state okay so animator drop this agent drop this and the player transform can be the player transform obviously we can just do a get component and get the nav mesh agent and so on okay then let's set up the animator and from what I can see let's see what do we have here yeah we do have the death and we have the idle add locomotion so yeah maybe we can just add it with this uh, I do have one zombie walk but it's hor it's ho yeah it's not really that great of an animation but we'll see we'll walk with this right now so because it, this is a blend tree I'm going to switch this to a set float and the target float we need is the forward oops set float forward and set it to one and we can all we can also add dump time and we can also pass the delta to this since it does need it and say delta maybe let's do 0.4 now this is not going to look great especially not in the first try okay yeah it's super fast as you can see it's not really what we want especially for a zombie and well one thing is to have the movement speed to be based off uh, the agent speed but we're going to cheat this we're going to cheat the movement for the zombies we're going to actually add them uh, add or take the root motion they have and there is a little bit of an issue with the leg there don't know if we could fix it via foot ak okay, we'll see anyway it doesn't matter so yeah we're going to cheat it this we're going to make it so that it actually waits for root motion and it updates yeah it takes the root motion and applies it on the agent and then add some value on top of it, a multiplier, so it kind of going to make it faster. Okay, so how do we do this? Let's go under utilities. And we're going to add this as animator hook. And actually, we might have to cheat this even further. So I'm going to delete this one, and I'm going to say enemy animator hook. So we keep things differently so I can access the enemy locomotion separately instead of the player state. Or, or, or yeah, no, we're going to keep this agnostic. Sure, why not? So animator hook. Let's add the namespace. It's still going to be a mono behavior and start and so on, but we're going to have access to the animator. 
Okay, I'm going to say public void enable root motion. And on start, we could just say, you know, anim equals get component animator. Now this is the the animator. It's this hook, this uh, script needs to be on the same object as an animator. Okay, so enable or handle root motion. Apply root motion equals status. Okay, then void on animator move. Then let's do public vector three root motion direction. I think that should be it. Then I'm going to say root motion direction equals anim dot. delta position subdivide by time dot delta time and that should give us the direction we want to move we, we would like to move based on our root motion I think so back to the enemy locomotion let's add another reference public animator hook on hook then we are setting the destination, but the speed now of uh, the agent uh, will differ. Let's uh, okay set that there. But let's take the direction from animator hook dot root motion direction. Then we need to turn this into relative direction. And that will be mtransform dot transform inverse transform direction. Let's see. Uh, from one space to local space. Yeah. Direction. Then that relative, the z of that relative can be dot agent dot speed relative dot mm, z multiplied by movement speed the only problem that this is going to cause is not going to be moving the agent while he's uh, Yeah, it's not going to be moving the agent while he's in uh, he's rotating around. He's only going to be moving forward. Let's try it and we'll see what we're going to do about it. Let's add this animator hook. Okay, obviously we can just assign the animator here and then animator hook. I'm going to select the animator hook here so I can see what happens with a root motion direction once we start moving okay I don't think it actually moves no does it move yeah it does move although I think if we go behind him he yeah so the only problem now that we face is that the agent's rotation speed should probably be smaller so yeah we need to handle we need to actually handle the the rotation differently because as you can see maybe if we raise this 99 it's a bit it's kind of slow how he rotates although now it's much faster so it does make a little bit more sense it's pretty retro at the moment and he always rotates 
So I think we will have to actually make this to make our own rotation. But we do have, uh, you know, a zombie that actually is going to follow us around. So I'm going to raise the angular spin to 999. Uh, I'm going to leave the speed as it is so that we can see what happens when we start moving. As you can see, it does change the speed. Oh yeah, it does change the speed because we have the multipli multiplier. Let's set it to one. So one should be your normal root motion. At least. It did change the angular speed as well. So let's set this to 9999. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's not that bad actually it does move as it would have been with the root motion uh, only thing i don't like is rotation but if you played any old resident evil games you will see that you know for the most part that will be they will be moving like this for the most part we're going to handle it i think i might want to handle it via animation events when you when the zombie rotates and when it doesn't okay but uh, let's let's worry about that later i don't really care we do have a working zombie at least so let's add back our actually no let's add the shooting mechanics on the next video for this part i think we have done enough okay we don't have to be doing a you know 30 hour uh, long uh, 30 minutes long parts for this i rather keep this simple so that you can understand and follow follow along rather than you know just building out on top of things and then later having to redo them so let's finish with this part as always you know what to do like subscribe and if you like to see more stuff like this of course consider supporting me on patreon so we can keep making a lot more of these games i'll see you next time